You remember Hazel from our meiosis videos? Um, she's grown quite a bit and you know why she, um, she's grown? It's because of the growth hormone in Hazel. She's got bigger and bigger but she's still as cute as ever. Hey Hazel, gorgeous little dog. But now this video is going to tell you more about hormones in the human body. So let's have a look now at the endocrine system. Right, in this video we're going to look at three different things. The difference between endocrine and exocrine glands. We're going to look at or answer the question, what is a hormone actually? And then we're going to look at the glands, their location, what hormones they secrete and what they, and the hormones functions are. And that will be the main focus of this video. If we look at the difference between an exocrine and an endocrine gland, it all goes about the ducts. Does it have ducts or not? And does it um, pass on its hormone to the rest of the body by a duct or not? So if we look at the exocrine gland, it secretes, its secretions are carried in the ducts. And an example of an exocrine gland is a pancreas and the salivary gland. So if you look here, let's say that's the pancreas. Here you've got the pancreatic duct and it goes to the duodenum. Then the hormone will go through the tube or the duct to the rest of the body. So that's why the pancreas is classified as an exocrine gland. Just a little secret, it's also an endocrine gland. So if you ever have to give an example, just say pancreas, it's both. <laughs> if we look at the endocrine gland, then the endocrine has got secretions that are carried in the bloodstream. So now if there are no ducts involved and an example is the adrenal gland. We're going to look at a lot of endocrine glands now in this video. But if I can just do a little drawing for you to show you that if that's the gland then that, and that's the bloodstream right there, say a blood vessel going right past the gland, then the hormone is secreted into, directly into that um, into that blood vessel and then it goes to the rest of the body so there are no ducts involved. Now we're going to answer the question what is a hormone? Just quickly, let's quickly look at it. The first thing is a hormone, they are organic chemical um, messengers and they're often proteins, they can also be steroids but they are chemical, please remember that, that's important. Then they, you only need them in small quantities. So they are secreted, you hear the word secreted, that's a word that you must use when you're talking about hormones, they are secreted in small quantities and then they are transported via the bloodstream. Once they get into the bloodstream, whether it's via a duct or directly, they go to a target organ. Each hormone has got a very specific um, place in the body where it has to act on. It doesn't just go to every organ everywhere in the body, it only has an effect on certain um, organs and we call those organs target organs. Now we're going to look at the hormones in the body and we're going to start at the head because there are some very important hormones um, and glands and we're going to look at what hormones those glands secrete. We're going to start with the um, hypothalamus and then we're going to move on to the pituitary gland and the thyroid gland. So let's look at the hypothalamus first. And every time I mention the gland, um, in red you'll see the hormone that that gland secretes. And then I'm going to tell you about the function of each one, each hormone. So the hypothalamus has a hormone called ADH that it secretes, antidiuretic hormone. Now if you take a pill that's a diuretic, it helps you urinate more. So um, diuretic or antidiuretic, that's got to do with how much water your body, um, how much urine you make or how much water you keep in your body. So the ADH is a, a hormone that controls the water levels in your body and how it does that, if you think back to grade 11, we, we learned about the permeability of the kidney tubules. So sometimes when water is in the nephron or urine is being made, some of that water is reabsorbed back into the body if you are dehydrated and um, so the ADH is a, is a hormone that controls that the permeability of the, the um, tubules and how much water is reabsorbed or not reabsorbed back into the body. 
Then you get the pituitary gland. Now the pituitary gland is like the boss gland of the, of the body. It's got lots of hormones that it secretes and I'm not going to mention all of them now. As we go through the body I'll bring up the pituitary gland every now and again. But the first one I want to mention is thyroid stimulating hormone or TSH. Thyroid stimulating, that means it's, it's stimulating the thyroid gland. It acts on the thyroid gland and what it does to the thyroid gland is it controls the level of thyroxine that is produced by the thyroid gland. So let's look at the thyroid gland now. The thyroid gland which is lower down, it's here at your um, throat area, lower neck. It's a butterfly shaped organ and it regulates the met metabolic rate of the body. So if you have a very high too high a level of thyroxine, you will, you'll burn energy very quickly and you will burn the nutrients in your body very quickly and you might be quite thin. And if you, you might be um, quite overweight because of your thyroid gland being underactive and less thyroxine being produced. Another thing that thyroxine does, if you've got a lot of thyroxine in your body and your, your um, thyroid gland is overactive, then you would um, have a, could have a very high heart rate and you feel like your heart is racing all the time. That could be due to your thyroid gland producing too much thyroxine. Then let's have a look at the next, um, the next one, the pancreas. Now you've heard about the pancreas before in grade 11. We, we learned about insulin um, being produced and insulin, what insulin does if you've got a very high level of glucose in your body or as your glucose level increases, maybe you've eaten a nice big piece of chocolate cake or you've had a lot of um, sugary sweets or anything with a lot of carbohydrates, then you might have a lot of glucose in your body and then your body um, produces more insulin. Now people that are diabetic, their bodies don't produce enough insulin so they have to have insulin injections to decrease the blood glucose level. So how insulin does this, how it decreases the blood glucose level is first of all it can allow the glucose to be absorbed by this into the cells or, um, or and the glucose can also take, um, the, uh, the um, insulin takes the glucose and stores it in the liver and muscles in the form of glycogen. So insulin converts glucose to glycogen in the liver and the muscles. It stores glucose in the form of glycogen, but now you mustn't confuse that with the next hormone, glucagon. So the two hormones in the pancreas are insulin, which decreases blood sugar level, and the other one is glucagon that increases the blood glucose level. So how it increases the blood glucose level is it takes the glycogen that's in the liver and it makes it gone out of the liver. So glucagon converts the um, glycogen into glucose and makes it available if you need to run or do sport or maybe even, even just to write an exam or do your homework. You need some glucose in your system so that your body can function. So glucagon may, tells the liver that the glucose must be gone out of the liver. On top of your kidneys, you have two, um, a gland on top of each one, an adrenal gland on top of each kidney. They are triangular shaped glands and what they do, they secrete two hormones. The one is adrenaline. Now adrenaline gears you up for any emergency, that fight or flight reaction that you have. Adrenaline plays a big role in that because it increases your heart rate, makes your breathing um, rate go up. And another thing that it does is the glycogen that is stored gets released in, um, into your bloodstream in the form of glucose. So it allows that glucose to be accessible in your body so that you can run away or you can fight or do whatever you have to do in an emergency. Another hormone that is secreted by the adrenal glands is aldosterone. Now aldosterone is less well known than um, adrenaline, but what aldosterone does, it it's, um, secretes uh, or regulates your salt levels in your body. And salt levels and water levels are very closely related because of osmosis and water potential. So the, another hormone that aldosterone works very closely with is ADH. And remember at the beginning of the video I spoke about ADH 
because it's released from the hypothalamus. And the hypothalamus is somewhere here. If you take your fingers and put them in just in front of your ears and go right into your brain into the middle, your hypothalamus is somewhere there. So ADH from the hypothalamus is working together with this aldosterone from your kidneys to regulate your salt and water levels in your body. But the aldosterone works on the salt, ADH on the water levels, and they work together as a team. Then, if you look here, I've got the, um, the pituitary gland at the top. It is just under the hypothalamus in your brain. The pituitary gland and the ovaries. Now, I've put that together. If you think back to the um, human reproductive system when you did the female reproductive system, there were four hormones that were involved with the uh, reproductive system, with the female reproductive system. Two of them come from the pituitary gland and two of them from the ovaries. So now we're going to look at how they work together. I'm just going to remind you because you should know this by now, but let's look at it again. The pituitary gland produces FSH, follicle stimulating hormone. It stimulates the follicles in the ovaries to produce mature ovum. And then you have luteinizing hormone. Now LH, luteinizing hormone stimulates ovulation. If you think of the 28-day the cycle of the menstrual cycle, when the menstruation starts up to the 28th day, if you go halfway between that, you get the 14th day, and that's ovulation more or less. Now, LH, if you look at the graph of LH in that 28-day cycle, it's low all the way, and at the 14th day, it peaks, and then it's flat again. So that peaking of LH, at, uh, roughly at day 14, that stimulates ovulation. And then straight after ovulation, the graphene follicle changes to the corpus luteum. And we'll talk about that now. But in the, uh, those are the two in the, in the pituitary gland, FSH and LH. But then in the ovaries, the ovaries also produce their own um, hormones. Estrogen is the one. Now, estrogen, just after menstruation or as menstruation ends, estrogen starts um, increasing in, um, in the level of in, um, ovula, um, estrogen. And then it peaks so that the, um, just before ovulation, but, and it stays um, at a reasonable level after ovulation, but what endo, um, estrogen's job is, is to make the endometrium, to re-establish the endometrium, and to make it thicker after menstruation. It also um, plays a role in the development of the female secondary characteristics, and um, like a, a smooth um, skin or the development of breasts. Those are all female characteristics that estrogen plays a role in. And then also the development of the sex organs for reproduction. Progesterone, which is produced by the corpus luteum, progesterone makes the endometrium even more vascular because maybe fertilization has taken place just after ovulation and you might need to maintain a pregnancy. So progesterone has to um, stay um, at a reasonably high level so that the pregnancy can be maintained and the, and the endometrium can stay in place to, help, um, to look after the baby. So um, the endometrium is made more vascular. If uh, there's no pregnancy, then the progesterone level will drop towards the end of the 28-day cycle and menstruation will start again. Now, you can see females have these four hormones, but males are much more simple. We're just going to look at one hormone, testosterone, the main one. That they are produced in the testes. Now, the testes also play a role in the development, um, uh, uh, well, in the production of testosterone, which influences the development of the sex organs and the secondary male um, characteristics like a deeper voice and facial hair. Those are all characteristics very specific for men. And then also the maturation of sperm cells. So that is all, um, testosterone plays a role in all of those things that are very um, particular um, and specific for men. Now, there are two more hormones. They're both produced in the pituitary gland. I've left them for the end because they're less uh, maybe um, well known. But the one is prolactin. If there is a pregnancy, you need the, ba the babies to be fed. And so prolactin is produced and it stimulates milk production in the mammary glands after pregnancy. 
The other one, now we're getting back to Hazel, is growth hormone, GH. It stimulates the growth of the skeleton and the muscles by stimulating protein synthesis. And so you can get bigger and taller and whether you're an animal or you're a human being, you can just grow um, and um, get to your full height that you're supposed to be. I hope these video, this video has helped you because if it has, then you must please subscribe to my channel because there will be more videos that will be useful for you. And to, as you prepare for your matric um, prelims and your finals, you can use these videos and watch them over and over again.